Hello again, everybody. John Scott here for WrestleLine. And of course, welcome to this uh, two nights of WrestleMania. And I'm pleased to say that I'm joined for our first night's review of WrestleMania by none other than 1310's um, owner himself. How are you doing? You're on the show today, Josh. Uh, it's great for you to be here. And I've uh, been looking forward to this because I know we uh, we pitched this idea like sort of earlier in the week last week about doing it. And uh, two nights of WrestleMania, you're here to talk about the first one. But before we do that, just, uh, just introduce yourself and uh, let some of the listeners know a little bit about what you do. Obviously, we spoke about 1310 plenty on the podcast, but coming from your, your point of view, just uh, how you got started and uh, all that in yourself. So, hello, Wrestling World, making my <laughs> losing my um, <laughs> wrestle line virginity here on the podcast. Yep. <laughs> I'm honor, honored to be here. So, thank you so much for, uh, to John for having me. Um, yeah, WrestleMania it was a huge night, and we'll get onto that in a minute. But uh, yeah, so I'm the owner of. 1310 Apparel, um, the owner, creator, whatever people want to call you these days or whatever name tag you want to give yourself. Um, I created the brand about a year ago and sort of launched it, um, I guess, June, July last year. I had some basic ideas of, of what I wanted to, what I wanted to do with it. It was a bit of a background story uh, based on true life, uh, myself and unfortunately now my, my, my former partner, uh, the brand 1310 is based on a specific date in our lives uh, and the Japanese sort of color logo um, just based on the fact that I love the Japanese culture I love Japanese professional wrestling and it was just something obviously to hope that people would buy into you know a life a true life story for love of professional wrestling and um, luckily the let's put it this way the customer base has been kind Um, I'm a believer of of people buy from people so you'll see a lot of me people probably think oh he's a, he's pretty vain no I, I i think people just buy from people get to know me get to know my brand um and i'll keep creating content so uh so yeah and john we met at dna wrestling didn't we um, we did yep but we ooh, did about four weeks ago it was five weeks ago maybe seems a lot longer than that now it does <laughs> sure. i know with, with the crazy <laughs> lockdown stuff going on but uh no it was really good you know nice to finally meet you because like you said earlier we have spoke before on and off and obviously working with yourself and turnbuckle tv and obviously we've supplied you um with with garments to wear with the power to wear and hopefully much more will come uh, from that as as i grow as you grow and obviously working with dna wrestling and, and that so it, it's exciting i'm exciting so um sorry i'm excited i should say <laughs> but um, i'm i'm honored to be on here and, and obviously to be given the time to have a, a chit chat about mania and and everything that we've spoke about and done so yeah that's that's the basics yeah and i just want to reinforce uh, everything josh said i mean the thing about your brand in particular that stands out to me is that you know i have seen other brands try and work it in wrestling but the thing that stands out with you is that you are very much um you know you are the front and house of what you do like you put yourself out there you give the story your background and i do think people are drawn to that um mm. you know to see the person why they got into what they're doing what their passion is and uh, i think for that reason i think that's why i think 1310 is going to be pretty successful on uh, the uk wrestling scene as it already is i mean like you see those stuff everywhere anyway but um certainly from my point of view like the feedback i get is is the fact that you know you're out there people can see who you are you know it's not just a logo uh, and here you go here's your top you know i know that you're very hands-on with everything you do um and of course like you was talking about like the the japanese stuff that you really enjoy and things like that like that's quite a big thing like people that go over to the website will will be able to see that but um just for us here i mean is uh, i know that we're living in quite difficult times but um mm-hmm with everything and i'm sure that's having some effect on on your stuff as well as it is everything else but have you um have you got anything in the pipeline that uh you, you're thinking or discussing or putting out there um in the not too distant future yeah 100 percent. always mm-hmm. looking at uh fresh gear always looking at updating um t-shirts are obviously very easy mm-hmm. basic seller so keeping the logo fresh but not going away from making it recognizable mm-hmm. um so i've got my varsity hoodie out there which is the the, the gray 
hoodie with the black sleeves with the the, the, Jap- uh, the Japan logo that I call it with uh, left breast embroidery. Mm-hmm. I've got the new track jacket. Obviously, there's one on its way for you, John. As we can't wait, can't wait. Um, but but on on that side of things, unfortunately, suppliers at the moment have closed, um, mm-hmm. which means I've had to take down that new jacket from the site because obviously ordering processes can't happen. Um, the uh, new jog bottoms I've got, which sold a few pairs of those within the first week of launch and then unfortunately the news again suppliers having to close i do source my goods from one supplier Mm -hmm. um they supply a lot of the uk with clothing i talk i'm talking high street shops i'm talking clothing suppliers as well and and big brands stuff gets relabeled so everything for me is sourced by me everything is handled by me um, I take it to my embroiders. I create my own logos. The only thing I don't handle is the embroidery machine and the print machines. Um, it's obviously all done in house. But yeah, I've got mm-hmm. new hoodies that I'm looking at at the moment. You may have seen it floating around on the Instagram. Um, it's the sort of white logo in a box, and it's going to be sort of small central chest embroidery. But again, it's early stages of the design, and then, and then sourcing the hoodie. I go through a lot of samples because, again, the way the brand works is quite simple. I would supply anything that i wouldn't wear myself Mm -hmm. and i like to think i've got a good feel for a decent garment i I wouldn't be here ripping people off you know for money but yes i'm hands-on like you said um source everything i touch everything i post everything everything i do uh discount codes which i know you've got one i'm sure you'll mention it later on yeah uh, it's all done by me it's all done by me and my yeah. hands and my eyes and I don't have outside interference of, of any sample, of any sense so yeah it's enjoyable and it's a side project of course um, nice and who knows it might go on to bigger things and uh, your your very kind words I really appreciate that and obviously anyone that's listening that owns some of our apparel I'm truly truly grateful uh, for you spending your hard-earned money um, on, on my gear so thank you very much yeah, no, absolutely. Couldn't agree more with uh, with with that statement of uh, putting that. And don't forget, people, um, go and check that out. We're going to give away the uh, the code a little bit later uh, during this first night of WrestleMania. Let's get straight down to it, then, shall we? Um, of course, just want to point out a few things. Uh, obviously, yesterday we did have Indie Mania go on as well, supplied by uh, Wrestle Talk, and that announcement coming out about the partnership now between Turnbuckle TV and uh wrestle talk and uh, yeah i've got to say i, I watched probably about um half of that show like i haven't seen it all the way through but it was it was very good and uh, it was the right kind of timing because i think it finished around eight o'clock so it gave you like a nice three hour gap before wrestlemania uh because sometimes you can get a little bit overloaded with wrestling when it comes to wrestlemania weekend but i uh, i think they they've just got the right idea there um, especially with everybody in this country knowing how long we have to stay up for. Um, Josh, yourself, was you was you one of these fans with me that was staying up all night? And uh, that experience, I guess it never goes away for us in the UK, but uh, how was it for you? Just the yeah. staying up part and did you have a, a strategy? The, the staying up part for me, and I don't want to come across as... As, as big headed about it but mm-hmm. i i find it quite easy and and the yeah. reason for that is i've been watching wwe for 21 years um i haven't missed a I, probably telling a, a bit of a porky a white lie but to my knowledge i haven't missed a live pay-per-view truth be told probably since armageddon 2003 which actually wasn't well, streamed on tv mm-hmm. um i've always been getting up through the night going to school the next day or going to work the next day and i've just trained trained my body to do it so yeah i find it easier than than most if i'm if i'm honest mm-hmm. with you but your body gets used to it so yeah, yeah. dedication I'm all, there i'm an all-nighter <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, uh, so we should start. The fact we did get like um, a pre-match to the actual show itself, which was, of course, Cesaro up against Drew uh, Gulak. So, yes, Josh, what did you make of, obviously, the opening match and uh, having this on just before the the WrestleMania show itself uh, between Cesaro and uh, Drew Gulak? Loved it. I'm so glad that these two guys got a short opportunity to, um, to show what they can do in the time slot allowed uh, mm-hmm. the no hand no hands airplane spin will be remembered for that for that match but 
uh, there's no secret that Drew Gulak is a star and he's going to have a big 2020 based on his last four or five weeks. Mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah, I enjoyed it. Good way to kick off um, a different style of WrestleMania, for sure. Yeah, uh, no, I liked it as well. Uh, I was quite surprised it was added on, uh, but I guess, you know, it's worth having on the, the pre-show side of it. Um, then, of course, we do hit WrestleMania. And uh, I guess one of the things going into this, Josh, like especially for my listeners, one of the big question was what kind of setup, what kind of layout were they going to have at WrestleMania? How were they going to do it? Were they going to tweak things from how they'd done Raw and SmackDown and NXT in the, the weeks gone by? Um I've got to say, reaction-wise to this, like emails that I've had in, some some good, some very negative. Um, I think some people seem to suggest it felt still empty, even though they kind of lit it up as much as they could. Other people suggested maybe they should have just sort of darkened out as much as they could and just concentrated on maybe just the ring as opposed to showing... Um, just the kind of the size of where they were, I guess. Uh, what was your take from it? And from a fan's point of view, like someone who's just said, you know, you've watched every pay-per-view since, since 03. What did that take you out or was you okay with it? Was it, you know, like over, like we will get into every match, but for you as a fan watching this, um, how was that experience? And were you able to look past the whole setup that we had here? Yeah, I mean, it's no. I, I think you you just said there you've had a few emails in people saying they should have made it. Try not to make it look empty. I think, I think it's impossible to make yeah. something not look empty when it is mm-hmm. empty. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. There's it, it's hot, there's, there's the echoes of everything. You yeah. can hear the the canvas. Um, <laughs> you know, you can hear you you can just hear everything. You know. Um, very, very difficult, but I will say absolutely love what they did with the huge WrestleMania sign. Mm-hmm. Um, loved. Uh, they did darken it out. They darkened it out, but lit it up. Mm-hmm. If that makes sense. Yeah. It, it looked condensed. It looked personal. But actually, we got the chance to focus solely on wrestling. Mm-hmm. And that's what made the whole show for me extremely good like mm-hmm. extremely good i was really impressed the lead up to it however was always going to be very difficult because i don't know about you or anyone else that's listening but i always nostalgia okay yeah, we always yeah. Go, i'm pretty sure you do as well mm-hmm. we all go back and watch previous pay-per-views so when it comes to mania rumble and SummerSlam, we probably always go back and watch last year's or 10 years ago and you watch it and you think wow this is amazing. Look at that arena, 70,000 people. Mm-hmm. It was always going to be difficult and different this year. But if, if you could set your mind to remind yourself it is empty and mm-hmm. there's a reason it's empty, then you would be, you, you'd be fine. Yeah. I'm, I'm positive there's a few people out there that still disagree and that it should have been postponed. But really, unfortunately, life has to go on. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Um, and WWE have done something very, very special which will give us something to talk about in 10 years' time and say, well, when COVID-19 was really heavy, WWE put on one hell of a weekend for us. Still. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a uh, it, it's very, very difficult situation that WWE were put in with this whole setup. And like you said, I think you, you've really um, you hit the nail on the head there with the whole people going back, like, you know, Obviously, on our podcast, we've done loads of watch-alongs of mm. uh, a lot of these WrestleMania matches. And again, you put yourself in that mindset and then you get on to this. And obviously, there's going to be a huge drop um, <laughs> once you get to this point. But if you'd have only checked into the last SmackDowns and Raws that have been playing, this probably would have had quite a good feeling about it. Because compared to those, this did stand out. Um, there's no doubt about it. They've done a terrific job of making it look different and unique um i'm not really sure what they could have done any different i mean some people were suggesting things like holograms i mean i even though they were editing this stuff i don't think they had enough time to be doing all kinds of stuff like Mm. that plus they had to tape it quite quickly and you know people talking about having green screens around the whole thing so they could have put an audience in and fake audio i'm not really sure (laughs) 
that would have been ideal either. Um, to be honest with you, I'm not. You know, could have. It, I think that would have come across as quite. Um, I don't think they've, they're at the point where they can do that, where it looks decent enough. 